I'm Eric Pliny. Welcome to Owls Access and welcome to Ambler Sports Complex where the Temple Owls just took on the Siena Saints. Temple defeated the Saints 2 to nothing, and with help from players like Evan Bronsdorfer and Augustin Coley scoring the goals for the Owls in the second half. Augustin Coley scoring the go-ahead goal to go up one nothing, and that's all the Owls would need. But Evan Bronsdorfer capped it off with a great shot from the left side across the net to go up 2-0. It was a physical game for the Owls, a lot of penalties on both sides, and the Owls actually had less shots than the Saints. The Saints out shooting the Owls, 16 shots in seven of those shots on goal. The Owls only five shots on goal. The second half also belonged to the Owls, although it wouldn't appear that way if you were here at the game. A very even match by both teams. Siena putting a lot of offensive pressure on the Owls. The goaltender for the Owls came up big multiple times. JT, it was, uh, it was, it was a hard fought match in the first half. It was a well defense, uh, played defensively by both teams. Uh, what allowed you guys to finally get through real early in the second half? Um, I think we just uh, kind of wore them down a little bit. Um, sometimes you have to do that in the first half. We, we defended pretty hard, but in the second half we started pushing more and um, we created a couple chances. I told the guys, you know, hang in there and everyone's spirits were high for the second half. And when you do that, you create even more chances when uh, defenders get tired and that's what we did. And, you know, we got the win today. So. Hey, you and Tyler uh, Whitmer, you guys seem to be uh, the leaders of this team by, by default just because of your play. Uh, just kind of talk about, he seems to be kind of more of the uh, outspoken emotional leader on the field. You kind of see him kind of shouting around to everybody mm -hmm. and you kind of stay more quiet. Kind of kind of talk about that. Yeah, I like to, I try to lead more by example. I'm, I'm more of a quiet kid, I'd say, but um, we have a, like our center backs and, you know, our midfielders, they're, they're always yelling on the field. So I kind of feel like, you know, they're the ones that are always stepping up and, and doing the vocal part of the game. I just try and, you know, uh, whenever they need kind of a, I'll add a, a thing here and there, but overall I try and lead more by example. So You're great at uh, dispersing the ball around to your teammates. You, you know, you're in the midfield throwing the ball around. Uh, it seems like you took a, tried to take a, more chances at the net for yourself uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something you're trying to do more? Yeah, I, I think yeah, you have to kind of push yourself to score goals, and it, it makes the team better as a whole. And I kind of needed it to take even more on my uh, more responsibility with, with the goal scoring since I am up top, and I need to help Tyler out because he's playing phenomenal. But uh, you know, guys are going to mark him tighter, and you need goals from all around. And so that's something I've been concentrating on. You guys are heading uh, into the bulkier uh, conference uh, games now. Mm -hmm. What what, did, what do you guys take from the non-conference schedule? You guys had a good record, five and three. Mm -hmm. uh, after AM one, I think you had a tie. Mm -hmm. um, how? What do you guys take from your non-conference schedule? How do you bring that into your conference schedule? Well, the non-conference is kind of the time you, you get all the kinks out. You uh, you know you, you find uh, where you're weak and the things that you need to work on. So that by the time you're a conference, everything is everything's a go. And because those games are even more intense than these games are and you, you know the focus has to be there and you have to have everything sorted out and so I think I think we found our rhythm by winning the last four games here and uh, you know I think we're going to carry that into conference so seems like you guys have a lot of depth on the team uh, coach uh, was doing a lot of subbing rotating it seems like you have a lot of guys who can play a lot of different positions mm -hmm. yeah we need that because you know people get tired people get injured and it's a long game you know you never know what you know like today Evan came off the bench and scored a, a great goal for us and you know you need that and you know that I, I think that's a great thing that our team has and it, it's one of our you know best things that we have going for us so thanks a lot that was JT Noon of the Temple men's soccer team Temple again defeated Siena 2 to nothing I'm here with head coach of the men's Temple men's soccer team co head coach Mac Williams coach early or th throughout the whole first half it was a defensive game you guys were able to put the pressure mostly in their zone but you weren't able to come away uh, with with a goal but early in the second half, it just seems right away just clicked and you able to get that first goal. Talk about that. Yeah, we talked about it at halftime. I thought what was happening is they were doing a great job defensively of packing things and uh, compacting things in the middle of the field. And actually, they got some chances from that because we were spread out pretty wide and trying to possess the ball. We spent too many times passing the ball instead of being a little bit more direct. So we talked about it at halftime and we wanted to get the ball wide and get it wide quicker. And uh, we actually did that and with Marty uh, playing the Augustine Coley and we finished from the uh, flank over. So we talked about it and then we, our second goal was the same thing with uh, JT Newton uh, setting up uh, uh, Evan Bronsdorfer. Now, 
by default, I mean, the leaders of this team, JT Noon, Tyler Whitmore, uh, neither of them had a goal today, but it seems like this team has a lot of depth. Um, and it seems like you did a lot of subbing in, a lot of different players doing a lot of different things. Yeah, and that's, that's you know, uh, obviously JT and Tyler are a big part of our team, but we need the other guys to step up and, and, and score some goals. And, and today, uh, uh, Evan Brondorfer and uh, Augustin Coley did, and I think that's, that's how we're going to be successful because if teams, you know, key on JT and Tyler, uh, you know, and they shut them down, if we're not able to finish, you know, other positions, then it's going to be difficult for us. But, you know, I think the guys did a great job, and I think, you know, it keeps everybody's legs fresh, and I thought they did a great job today. Is this where you thought you'd be at the end of uh, non-conference play going into the conference play? Uh, we would have liked to have had a couple more wins, but that's okay. I think or we won the last four, so I think that's what the positive thing. We went through a bad weekend. We had a bad weekend when we went down and played in the Old Dominion tournament. But, you know, we've learned from that. We've recovered from that, and I think we're – you know, we're, you know, I think the key is trying to peak at the right time, and I think we're starting to play well. It was a very physical game today. It seemed like maybe you would have liked a more, uh, little more protection from, uh, for your players from the referees. Uh, is this the kind of style of play that your team is used to, physical play? Yeah, obviously, I think you know Division One is definitely a physical game, and some games are a little bit more physical than others. You know, and uh, it was okay. I don't know if it was too bad today, but you know, I, I've been in games that are much more physical, and some that aren't as physical. So. Uh, but it was good that, that we came out of it, no, no injuries going into the uh, A-10 uh, uh, conference games next week. Thanks a lot, Coach. That was Coach Mac Williams for Temple's men's soccer team. We're here with Evan Bransdorfer, who scored uh, the goal that seemed to put it away for the Owls to go up 2-0 midway through the second half. Uh, Evan, co Coach just put you in the game, and you came in and scored that one right away. I saw a couple of chuckles from the bench. Uh, what, what kind of feeling was that to come right off the bench there? Pretty good. Uh, first touch, I look up, I get the ball, and there's no one ahead of me. I'm just me and the goal. I was like, this works. So just took a touch and put it away. And Evan, uh, we saw on the sideline, Coach was kind of coaching a little bit in the first half, kind of trying to position you, trying to put you in the right spot. It seemed like he was a little bit frustrated with you coming off. but. Uh, Putting that uh, goal in there probably definitely eased uh, the pressure. Yeah, well, uh, traditionally I'm a striker, so it's a little different for me just playing outside, but uh, I'll play where he puts me, so I'm getting a little getting more used to outside mid, so I guess the goal helps helps the play outside mid a little more. So we'll see. How do you feel uh, you did this game? Do you think this is something you're definitely going to be comfortable with in the future? Yeah, I mean, th the way they were playing, they were pinching in a lot, so I had a lot of space outside, out wide, which uh, outside mid or any player, you love having 10 yards of space every time you get the ball, so. That was nice, so play again and get 10 yards of space. I'd love to play with that. This concluded out-of-conference play for the Owls. They'll pick up in-conference play for St. Joe's at 7 p.m. start October 10th. That'll be an away game, but we'll be back here at Ambler Sports Complex for a St. Bonaventure for a 12.30 p.m. start. I'm Eric Pelini. This has been coverage from Owl Access.